The multi-age intermediate students of Karen Dumond at Philpott Elementary are doing pioneer presentations as part of a culminating social studies activity. Ah, what, what happened? happened? What happened? My arm, I think it's broken. Man, you're the strongest one. White sheet. The students will receive a formal assessment at the end of the pioneer unit, and the presentations are to help prepare for the test. But we were studying pioneers, and we thought it would be interesting if we gave each of the kids, they were in small groups of two or three, and gave them some reading material on certain aspects of what it would be like traveling out west, going on the Oregon Trail, and basically told them it was up to them to come up with some way to teach the rest of the class their material because we will be having a unit test at the end and each group is responsible for some part of that test. We have Taylor and Jonelle and um, they have their question and their answer on the board and I see some of you have your notebooks out. The presenters will answer the question, where did the pioneers get their mail on the trail? When you get up, your parents go and get the mail. But they couldn't just get up and go outside and get the mail. And we get our mail in envelopes with stamps and addresses and return addresses. But all they had were pieces of paper sealed with wax that was hardened. That's all they had. And they would have to stop at a fort and pick up their mail. They might not get a letter for two years. Through questioning, Mrs. Dumont makes certain the students have a complete understanding of the facts. How did the mail travel from fort to fort? How did they actually get them? Because they didn't have automobiles like we did now. That they, wasn't in our packet, but I'm, I'm they, guessing they that someone, a uh, Pony Express. No, the, tra the cover, the people that sit it would go to the fort in the covered wagon and drop it there probably. And then whenever the other person showed up at that fort, they get the mail. Sometimes when they're working on individual projects like this, we may have a few more expectations for the older students or for ones who are more um, capable than we do for the younger ones. Sometimes the pioneers didn't have any wood or anything to make a fire. So they would have to use sage bushes and bison droppings, which the pioneers called buffalo chips. Students are encouraged to ask questions. Would the kids or would the grown-ups get the buffalo droppings? Kids would, usually. These are the bison chips, and these are the uh, sage bushes, and this is the fire. What happened? I think Joe? I got bit by a snake. Let's get to the wagon. Okay. One month later. Hey, my arm! Hey, look at my snake bite. It's better. There's Pacific Springs. Wake up, Jed. It's Pacific Springs. Cool.